In this video, I want to talk about the Ads tab, but before I do, there was one more thing I wanted to mention on the Groups tab. This is a tip that I can give you that really helps in finding unwanted keywords that you don't want to bid on. So let's say the situation is this. You've already grouped your keywords, and let's say you didn't really take your time, you didn't do a very good job um, of looking through them and making sure they're keywords you actually want to bid on. So what you can do is, here on the Groups tab, the purpose of the Groups tab is to filter your keyword list, so let's look for keywords that do not contain the full word, and then we can type in things we don't want to bid on. For example, I see bars, egress code, I see drainage, so let's type in bars, code, drainage, and you can see that those keywords get filtered out of this list. So the idea here is we are going to bid on all these keywords and any keywords that contain these phrases we're not going to bid on. So for example I see um, treatment treatment and you can go through until you have a list like so and until your keyword list looks refined like stuff you actually want to bid on. So now from here we can say so these are all the keywords that don't contain these phrases. Now let's find the keywords that actually do contain these phrases. So I chose contains full word. And these are the keywords that we're going to basically consider negative as negative keywords or we're just going to delete them. So I'm just going to hit control A, delete, and they're gone from my keyword list. Now I can save this list to my notepad file or whatever you want and we're going to add these as negatives later on. So now we have a pretty clean keyword list here. We're going to try and generate an ad and to do that we go to the ads tab and let's just first talk about what you can do on the ads tab. You can actually save ad templates so if you create an ad you can reuse it over and over again in the program by saving it. The way you save it is you would write an ad and then you click this save icon. It's going to ask you what do you want to save it. Just a friendly name. And then you can save the template. You can also open a saved template if you choose. Or you can delete a template that you don't want anymore. So let's go ahead and delete that ad. These buttons up here, this creates a new ad. Like you see, if we want this to go away, we just hit delete ad. So if we were going to copy this ad to a new ad, we can hit copy to new ad, and then we can you know, change it to make a different ad variation like vinyl windows or something, for example. So now we have these two ads that we could generate. And one thing I want to talk about is these, uh, if you hit this box icon, this is a template string builder. Don't be intimidated by this. All it means is we're going to take the campaign name, which is in this situation campaign number one, or we could take the ad group name, for example, basement windows, or we could insert the group URL. And I'll talk about what these are now. If we wanted to insert the campaign name into the ad in some place we could do that. Let me show you how to leverage that. So let's go ahead and delete this and then let's go ahead and first change this campaign number one to we'll say replacement windows. Hit enter. Now we just changed our campaign name. So that's basically a variable that we can use if we wanted to to insert into the ad. So let's go ahead and select campaign and then we can write default text. So in the case that that the campaign name is too long, we're talking about the headline here because this only allows 25 characters. So anything that's 26 characters or greater, it's going to contain the text that we write in this text area right here, right now. So let's say um, quality windows for less. And that'll be our default text. You can see this is what the resulting template string would look like. And this here, this tells us how to handle spaces. 
between the words. So you see quality, space, windows, space. If this was a display URL, we could put a dash, for example, but it's not. So we'll just keep it no, just the regular old space. So hit OK, and that inserts a template string within your headline. Just think of this as a placeholder. So it's saying, if the character count is less than or equal to 25 characters, it's going to insert replacement windows as the headline. If it's not, it's going to replace the text with quality windows for less. Well, we know that replacement windows is less than or equal to 25 characters, so in every instance it's going to insert replacement windows. Another thing, another way you could use it, let me just go ahead and prove that. Let's go ahead and delete this ad, generate ads, and you can see every single ad has replacement windows in it because it's less than or equal in 25 characters. So let's say we want to do something a little bit different like ad group. Let's go ahead and select the ad group and this is the one that I use the most and then we can put default text. We'll just say replacement windows and you can see what the resulting placeholder looks like. Hit OK and we can see we're at 19 characters. So if we wanted to we could actually put static text outside of it. For example, vinyl and then we have dynamic text here. So this could be static text plus whatever fits here will generate our ad. So let's go ahead and delete these these ads currently. Let's generate an ad now. So we hit generate ads button and you can see what it did with the competitor group. It took the word vinyl and then it added whatever the ad group name was. And it's, in this situation, it's competitor. Clearly, you don't want to have an ad that says that. But we have other groups here that have basement window, for example. So we see vinyl basement windows was inserted into the headline. So this gives you a really good idea of how this dynamic text actually works. You can generate relevant ads for each ad group because each ad group is named after the types of keywords that it represents. So if we go to the groups tab, we look at the ads tab, we can now see vinyl casement windows. We see this ad. If we don't like something or if we wanted to write something more specific about it, we could. We can say um, casement windows up to 50% off, making this ad more relevant to casement windows. Another trick I use is let's say let's say our URL wasn't so long. What we could do is put um, let's say it was windows.com slash and then you can put the ad group name into the display URL. So we're gonna say replacement dash windows and I prefer to use dashes between spaces and in order to do that you can select this dash we have dash underscore plus sign percent 20 whatever you whatever you prefer and then hit OK now let's go ahead and delete these ads generate some new ones with this placeholder parameter in place and let's take a look at the ad now so it took the ad group name which was casement windows in this case and it put that into the display URL and everywhere there was a space it put a dash and it did that for each ad group. So this is a really powerful tool if you can use to leverage it and recognize that we have ad group variables that we can use to insert into the ads and doing so we can make really relevant ads for each group. And so, you can, if you wanted to, you can copy this current ad to a new ad and generate a different version. It's completely up to you. You can always edit the ad down here below. And that's essentially how it works. The last thing I want to show you is the group URL. So the group URL, if you remember, we put these URLs onto some of the ad groups. So let's just say the default 
URL was um, HTTP windows.com let's say that's just our well, we want all this other traffic to go to that domain so here in the ads we can say let's go ahead and delete this one and let's insert the group URL parameter for the default text I generally just put nothing let's go ahead and delete those ads now we're gonna generate some ads again and then let's go and see if we can look at the garden windows URL so you see how it says dash garden windows that's because we specified the garden windows URL right here for this ad group so it's going to insert whatever URL is here on the ad group into the ad for that ad within that ad group if that makes sense so essentially that is the ads tab if you have any questions or comments just definitely leave them below and I'd be glad to clarify anything In the next video we're just going to talk about generating the results and importing them into AdWords Editor or into Bing.